what um what role would you love to fulfill as in terms of like uh, I want to be a serial killer. You want to be a serial killer. So bad. That's okay. crazy. I can't fucking wait. I'm gonna probably write it myself. How would you prep for that? Like I don't think I need no prep. Bro. <laughs> I'm gonna be real. With you. <laughs> it's already done. It's there. It's inside of me. <laughs> it's all thing. Nah, but for real, I would uh, I would just watch a lot of that, a lot of different shit, man. But American Psycho is one of my favorite fucking I just movies. Talked about that Hey y'all, it's your girl Anthony Smithy, and I'm live with Ray in Chicago. So what's up? What's up? We have a special guest joining us today. You might have forgot about him as Clarence from Harbaugh or Keyshawn from Ballers, as he currently plays Janar Sansom from the hit show Power Book Force Four. Welcome, Chris. What up, though, Missy? <laughs> what up? What's up? What's up, what's up, G? What's up G? Uh, So you're back. Season, you're back filming season three. How does it feel? Dope, man. It's dope to get a season three for me. You know, it's my first, like, recurring season as a series regular. So it's dope to, like, especially in Chicago because I'm from here. This is the crib. We shoot here. So it's just kind of surreal all around. But to be here for the third year, it feel dope. I can feel the shift in the city and the I energy. Was, I was going to say, like, how yeah. do you feel about this full circle moment that this kind of is, like, the rebirth of your career, especially being back home? Yeah. I mean... Oh, yeah, that's that's a, a statement. Though. I don't know, but yeah, this is like the emancipation, I guess. Yeah. yeah, it's like so. It definitely feels dope, and the whole being back home shit feels surreal and dope. And I feel like it affords me moments to find pockets of things about Chicago that I didn't even know existed. Because you've been gone for so long. That and the fact it was like shit. I ain't had no money. I wasn't living in Gold Coast and downtown and shit. Like boy, I was that way. I was that way. We, that way is. Yeah, I was west. in I west 290 or I was in Hyde Park. I'm like, I didn't know these restaurants and these bars. And it's like, they didn't exist back then. I mean, there was still some of them like, but like now I treat Gibson's like cheers. You know what I'm saying? Like, like Gibson's is my cheers now. Like, and that's crazy. That's the go-to get my regular dinner. Yeah. That's crazy to me. Like I just be at the bar chilling. Like, all right. You so, know? so that's, a, so that's a case. You just pop up anywhere. Like, I know you get this often, but do people always, oh, hey, Jan, hey, Jan, hey, Jan, hey, Jan, hey, Jan, hey, you the guy from Power? Uh, yeah, depending on where I'm at, you know, like, it's really, it's subjective, not just everybody, you know, there's a lot of people who just don't watch that shit, or just don't have a clue, so, like, I don't, I don't just assume that everybody know that shit, but when I'm at, like, the spots with us, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, when I'm at them nigga spots, yes, <laughs> yes, it happens, like, that's why I kind of, I'm, I kind of like watch myself. I don't like to walk through seas of niggas that much no more. Like I call it a sea of niggas. I don't. I kind of stay away from that. Like you know what I'm saying? Because that's that shit can get overwhelming. I'm like, oh shit. I'm, I mean, especially so you've been spending most of your time in LA, and I know it's different compared to Chicago scene. Yeah, LA is dope. That's I think being in LA, living there, and then being here, and now being on a show. I think it made me understand why everybody lives in L.A. It's not because niggas love L.A. that much and L.A. is the greatest place because Chicago is shitting on L.A. Yeah. The reason niggas live in L.A. is because <laughs> nobody gives a fuck in L.A. Yeah. And that's why everybody who's like on TV and shit lives there because it's them niggas, yeah, them niggas could just be in the grocery store chilling and ain't nobody finna be on the, oh my God, blah, 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 blah. I will so say many that people, for sure. So many, so many yeah. stars. They just gonna be like, okay, yeah, they go Leo. About Chicago being very starstruck because we we never experienced or or were used to it back in the day. Yeah. When we were kids, you would never you see you see Michael Jordan. Oh my God, it's Michael Jordan. Yeah. Now you see an athlete like, oh, that's so and so. He's like, that's so and so. You know. That's saying? how it is. Chicago it's is a is, is an athlete dominated yeah, city. He, he, he come, he come you don't really see actors and rappers for real like that out here. Even the rappers who made it from here don't live here. Like you know what I'm saying? Like right. Right. Yeah. None of them, nobody lives here because in LA or in Atlanta. That's what I'm saying. I'm so, Houston. Yeah. So Chicago yeah. is like the the athletes, the Bulls and the Bears are the stars here. Like right. when you see one of the Bulls players, you're like, oh shit. But to see actors walking around that you yeah. on a show you actually watch, like you know what I'm saying, like you know Chicago Fire people, don't nobody really give a fuck about if you saw somebody from Chicago Fire. Not the urban community. Though. Exactly. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. So like for us. We ain't got ain't no actors floating around. It's like me and Isaac for real. Like, yeah, it's <laughs> everywhere. Yeah, it's me, it's it's me and Isaac. We already know. Yeah. Um, so, what would you say? Uh, how to how you separate yourself from your character? And, how, how do you like, separate Janard Chris from Chris? Yeah. Um. Well, for me, I just know that 
I'm real intentional about that shit. Like I call it, I'll be like Chris D. Lofton, the actor, and Chris Lofton, the person, two different people. So I separate that in that regard. And then with the Janar shit, it's just I could tap in and out. I think I'm good with just tapping in and out. I ain't one of them people who be like, oh, my God, I'm still in character, like, and blaming right. that shit for making stupid-ass decisions. Like, nah. Like, to me, at the end of the day, this shit is a job, a, a different job, a unique job, but still a job. Right. So, nigga, when I'm off work, I'm off work. Okay. I'm like, and you know, a lot of women, that be their favorite line when they deal with an actor. I don't know if I want to deal with an actor because how do I know if you're not acting right now? <laughs> and I'll be like, well, unfortunately for you, I'm sure you can't afford my fee. Right. So what you see is what you get. You just get Chris, and that sucks for you because the actor version would probably be much better much than better. the Chris you're going to get. <laughs> right. Because this is what you get. This is Chris. Like, you know, so you might not like Chris. Yeah, because I was saying, and like other, <clears throat> other podcasts and stuff, where actors be like, they don't know how to separate that, like, between the two. Yeah, I think I'm real good with that. I think because I don't, I don't take myself or what I do too serious. So, for me, I don't I don't really have that problem, like, at right. all, for real. Like, I don't. So, for me, it's not that thing. But I know when I did season two, because season two was crazy. Like, my character on drugs, hair, right, right, right. crying, and this and this and all this shit. They asked me, the Lionsgate stars, they were like, hey, do you, uh, if you need therapy or something, yeah, that's what I was gonna say. Cause let us know. Right, like, we'll we'll pay for you to take take therapy because you had to go to some really dark places. Right. And I was just like, nigga, shit. I'm just I'm just like, I think because you know how they say sometimes it's better to be lucky than good. Right. Because that's I true. didn't go to like acting school. I didn't do classes and all that shit. So I don't know all these methods and techniques. I'm just doing Going what I think numbers. works. Yeah. yeah, yeah. 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 So like, I'm over there with headphones on, listening to like. Yolanda Adams, the battle is not yours, so I can make myself cry. Right. Like, I'm not, like, so to me, they like, no, I don't feel like I need therapy. I'm like, I was just over there listening to this song. I know y'all need me to cry, right? Right. I'm about to cry now. So hurry up. Turn the cameras on. And then when it's over, I'm just like, all right, cool. I grab my phone. I'm just like, all right, yep. Like, nothing happened. Get no fan to it. Right. Like, I wasn't just in there pretending to snort the heroin and, and crying. I just right. open the phone as soon as they say cut. So with, that, with some of those moments on those in this episodes, were there any times where you had lived those moments and kind of put it in on the show? Well, no, nah, because I ain't never did no hard ass drugs or nothing like that. Um, but, but as like you know, in the streets, just the streets, yeah. like um, in, in the streets, in Chicago. Yes, yes. There, you know there, there's some moments like there were some moments like that. Um, yeah, like you know, there was definitely some moments like, especially a lot of conversations that I had with uh, my brother on the show, Isaac Diamond or whatever. So. Like, a lot of those moments, I remember, like, okay, I, I know this. And if I haven't lived it, I know somebody who did. Right. And I was, like, a fly on the wall while they were having that moment. I might have been sitting over there. It wasn't me. Right. You know, t- I think Tupac said that in one of his interviews. He was like, um, sometimes I'm speaking from a first-person perspective when I'm rapping. And sometimes I'm speaking as a viewer yeah, of right. some shit that I saw. And I think that's how I act, too. I'm either pulling from some shit that I actually did. Or I'm pulling from some shit that I saw one of my homies or friend, fam, friends, right. family members do. It's one of those. So you can relate. Yep. Yeah, exactly. No, I find you very talented. I mean, I've, I've, known that, I've known you for years now and just different experiences of you. I've seen it throughout your journey. Yeah, and thank so, you. So for me to see you and obviously knowing other athletes in the industry of who's really talented and not who's really acting and who's just being themselves. Right. You know right. Saying who's, yeah. really, who's really there's no in character because that's just them when they spit their lines out and they study and whatnot. It's just them being them because when they re- read the lines, when you see them, you're watching that there's certain people I'm just like, bro, that's not Can't even really take them serious. I can't even take them you serious as an actor that, because that. I know them in real life yeah. and I'm like, that's just how they are. That's there's them. There, yeah. is no, there is no separation of, oh, are they really acting like a goofball? No, that, that person really is a goofball. Yeah. You know? And I think people do that with me, but I think last season helped because niggas know, like, Chris don't be out here on drugs and shit. So right. I was like, no, oh, nigga, you was acting your yeah. ass off. Like, now I think that helped. And that's why I was, like, happy to do that shit. Like, at first I was worried about it. I was like, wait a minute, bro. Y'all finna have me on, on power doing heroin? I was like, that's different. Ain't nobody on power ever did that before. Like, niggas, they smoke weed. They might do a little cocaine. Right. But they ain't had nobody on there straight up shooting up. up. Like, yeah. don't get high on like, I'm like, wait a minute, damn. But then when I took a step back, I was like, nah, that's dope. Because it's like real actor shit. You know what I'm saying? So it's like I get a chance to really act. And I'm like, all right, bet. I got you. 
because you're jumping into like a space that you ain't never never experienced before. Exactly. You've experienced witnessing it, but not right. experienced doing, doing it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Like, like I've I'm seen the niggas. We see junkies and drug right. addicts all the time. I, like, so Ray's not from here. I'm from Mobile. Oh, you from Mobile? Oh, I got yeah. some folks down there, boy. For real? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So Ray's from Mobile, and um, you know I'm from Chicago. You're from Chicago, and you know out west. And I was explaining him the Chicago. You know, like out south, over east, yeah. out west, up north, right? And I had explained to him like 290 past the E-way, that's Heroin Highway. Highway, we don't yeah. go that way. Yeah, we don't. Highway. We don't go anywhere that, after that. That's yeah, just I ain't the understand. It's different in Alabama. It's a little bit smaller, so it's yeah. like the streets. Y'all got 160, 115. This is south. When we say like, if you're from the south, you're from the south side. If you're from the west, we say west side. So we don't say like, are we? We got yeah, how y'all have pockets? We got projects. So yeah. it'll be like. RV Taylor projects, it'll be Birdsville, it'll be like Roger William projects, things yeah. like that. It's a little bit different. I love yeah. how you had explained before of how New York boroughs is our size. I and I explained it the same way. Yeah, that's like, really what it is. Explain to people like, yeah, your boroughs is this, you know, the five boroughs, the tunnel goes this way. Well, the expressway separates the north side, west side, east side. Yeah, south exactly. Side. So no. it was just, you know, to say the heroin situation and mm-hmm. the show, and then for us to actually know the Chicago that we know and what it's known for, for that, that makes more sense to witness and experience it on the episode. Yeah, for sure. And I'll be, I like what my man. One of our directors who direct like all the seasons, she did like three episodes on our show. She from Mobile. Oh, for real? Yeah, she's uh-huh. dope. She's super dope. Shout out to Shooter. Okay. I'm going to take it back real quick. So how was your life after Harbaugh living in Chicago? I mean, shit, just regular. It was still a, yeah, it was still a regular life. Like, cause I ain't no shit. I was young, and I, I didn't even know I was wanted to be no actor. I didn't. I just randomly ended up in a movie. I wasn't trying to be no actor or nothing like that. How did that lead to you becoming and wanting to be an actor? Yeah, like just life. Look, you know what I'm saying. So after I did Hardball, I, I had an agent, so I was going on auditions, and I would book commercials. I didn't really get TV shows and movies. Like, I never booked those for real when I was younger. I had that little baby face. It was hard to place me. You know what I'm saying? So I definitely did commercials. I did a lot of commercials as a kid, and I was still trying to play sports. So that was my thing. I I still thought I was going to the league, football or baseball. That was my thing. So I was focused on that. I wasn't thinking about acting. And then probably like high school, it started picking up a little bit, started picking up, but I still wasn't on that because I thought I was going to college, still trying to go to the league, still – trying to rap, still in the streets. Like, I, acting was, like, the eighth thing I was thinking about. Right. right. You know what I'm saying? I was so, thinking about girls and money and, and, and same street shit. Like, yeah. anybody from um, here, like, yeah. you guys said it, too, you know, we, you're either actor or, or baller. Yeah. I mean, you're, you're a rapper or you're a baller. You're a rapper or you're a baller. You're a rapper or you're a baller. That's mm-hmm. kind of your way out of yeah. the hardships. And that's honestly what made me kind of choose acting because I was like, I've been doing this shit so long that I was acting before it was, I oh. guess, cool. Like, you know what I'm saying? It wasn't cool. Like, niggas used to be, like, talking about you and shit. Like, wait a minute. Wait, you finna go do what? I'm like, man, I, I, I got to go to audition, bro. Like, what you doing? Or even in present day, like, everybody's kids. It's the same thing. Yeah. Yeah. It's the, it's the modern day of auditions and, 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 you know, of, like, the acting. Because you're you're being somebody you're not or you're playing, like, all the, all the comedy stuff. He was right. saying, you know, again, he's not from here. So, like, when I'm like, yeah, uh. Bone is from here, corporate from here. There's so many people. From uh, here. Yeah, over, like, there's so many skit actors from here yeah. that people don't realize. Like, oh, like, you know, we had the conversation of how, he always assesses how is Chicago so talented? So talented. So talented. Because where I'm from, like in the South, like if you do anything with the art, they're going to be like, bro, what you doing? You know how to paint, you know how to act, you want to do. I play ball, so I play yeah. football. So it's like, yeah. you don't play football. You gonna rap? Or you gonna you know you wide receiver or corner? Uh, I play safety. Safety. Yeah, yeah, I, felt yeah. so I'm, I was a free safety. Yeah. yeah. So okay. it's just like you ain't got much. And when I look at Chicago, I'm like, damn, y'all got athletes because y'all got y'all had Derrick Rose. Mm-hmm. You got yourself that you act. You got a lot of actors, artists. I'm like, damn, how many? God damn, it's so many people from here. Yeah. And it's like talented, talented people. It ain't just like subpar okay. people yeah. like you know so right. many people you can if you look up chicago you're gonna find so many artists so many athletes and i was like dang with like you know just when people look at chicago it's like Chirac, you know what i'm saying mm-hmm. they say that but it's like how do you how could y'all like put it put it all together and just become that and y'all go through so much out here like that yeah i just i feel like because chicago we don't we a melting pot right. like honestly That's because she said. and we right in the middle of everything so i think chicago we we kind of take on a lot of each little coast. Like we got a little bit of New York in us, but the 
but a little bit of down south in us because of the great migration. So we kind of country. Right. You know, this ain't nothing but they call it Mississippi North sometimes. Like, because that's all this is. It's like everybody, people, the lineage, that shit come from Mississippi a little bit. So we got like kind of country morals and values, but we're a blue collar city. So we work like New Yorkers and shit. Right. Like every, because it ain't that many. Like we was just saying, there ain't that many actors and shit. Like niggas here work. You got to get your ass up and go to work. So we don't mind putting in the work, even if it's we choosing to do it in the arts. Right. But we still going to work. Like that's just Chicago. And then, like I said, we got the countryness. And then we kind of got a little bit of the East Coast when it comes to the fashion and styling. So it's like you put all that shit together. together. And that's why it's like the Midwest. We right in the middle of the 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 map. But here's the thing about saying the the Midwest. We are in the Midwest. But when you say Midwest, you don't think of Chicago. You think of the country. Like, like Iowa. Right? I don't know. I don't. When I think of Midwest, the only thing I think about is Chicago. But honestly, I really think we should be called Mid-East. Right. Because we're right, more, cause more, more east yeah. than yeah. west. Yeah, we're more yeah, east yeah. than west. I don't and know why they call it the Midwest. like Kansas City and like yeah. Iowa. Yeah. And like, you know what I mean? feel you. Yeah, Midwest, that do feel like more like Indiana. Yeah. I would call you know Indiana the Midwest. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Like the country. I don't want to say yeah. country town, but farm towns. Yeah. Like all the agriculture. Yeah, facts. I'll give you that one. That's facts. Um, we're going to tap in some new things. I saw your a voice on Good Times. Can you tell us about that project? Oh, uh, yeah. Um, that's dope. It's, um, I hope it's going to be dope. I think it's going to be real dope. I, ain't, I haven't seen none of it yet. I did it a few years ago, but it's just now coming out. What is it? Who is it? It's, a, um, Who is it presented by? It's Netflix. It's, it's a Netflix animated series with um, Norman Lear, who was the original producer of, of the original Good Times. Norman Lear, Steph Curry is uh, producing it. Yeah, and then this lady who's from Chicago, she's a showrunner, Renata Shepard. She's a showrunner. That's how I got that job. She just offered it to me because there was this, um, I did this show in L.A. that didn't get picked up. It was supposed to be straight to series, 10 episode. It was a Kenya Barrett show. It was like his third rendition spinoff of Blackish, right? Mm -hmm. So he had the Blackish, then Grownish, Mm -hmm. and then there was this other shit that he was going to do called Unrelated. And um, it was me and Jordan Sparks playing brother and sister. Like, this shit was like a whole show on ABC, ABC Freeform. And we had shot the first episode, and Renata was the showrunner and one of the writers of that show. It was supposed to be 10 episodes, and then all of a sudden, the president of Freeform quit, and then the showrunners fucking quit. Two of the producers just, like, it just blew up, bro. And then it was like, oh, uh, yeah, sorry, Chris, we're not doing the show anymore. I'm like, what? Hey, I thought I was going to get on the show for... Like, what? I thought I'm like blackest type shit. I'm like, this shit probably gonna run for years. Nigga, I'm gonna eat. I'm thinking I'm good. And they was like, yeah, no, sorry, we're not doing the show, but here's a check for eight episodes, even though you didn't film it. I'm like, nigga, fuck the money. I want the job. Like, nigga, I want, like, cool, thank you, but nigga, I want the job. Like, I'm trying to, like, really do this. But because of that, she was the showrunner. Renata was the showrunner, so she ended up getting this job on Netflix for good times, and she was like, Chris, I just got this gig. I'm doing something. They're remaking Good Times on Netflix. It's animated. Norman Lear, Steph Curry. I'm going to call you. And she really called me and just gave me like four or five episodes of that show. I ain't have to audition or nothing. Like, so something look out soon. When is it air? Uh, low key, I think it come out next week. I think oh, like yeah. April, April, April the twelfth. April twelfth, yeah, yeah. I think it come, yeah like, honestly, yeah. Next Friday, yeah. So next Friday, so oh, look word. Out for Friday. Yeah, for sure, for sure. So speaking of that, um, when it came to work. I know when y'all had the strike, y'all was out for a bit. Mm-hmm. What were you Long doing? time. Yeah, what were you doing on the strike? Hustling. Hustling. That was what I was doing. I was hustling, man. Like, um, I was just really doing, like, I was going on tours with the, um... Oh, with the, with the 50s? Well, no, I, um, I, yes, I did do that, but that, that wasn't making me no money. That was just like for fun. I was just, okay. I was just like, yo, 50, you on tour, nigga, the final lap tour? I'm like, I'm gonna just follow y'all in a couple cities, go to a couple, I went to, uh, like, all of these little stops in, uh, Canada. I went to all of their little Canada stops. I hit a couple more shows. I came here to the Chicago one. I, I was just with with them, just functioning like. And uh, Jeremiah, that's that's how me and him got closer because I was on tour with them niggas for real. Um, but for real, I was doing my own little tour with the club hostings. Like so, I did that. That's how I kept like bread coming in. I'm like, all right, I was just going city to city. I probably did like twenty city tour. Let's talk about this new tour. Oh yeah, your boyfriend. Your can boyfriend cook. can't cook. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Yeah, that's. That started during the strike too. Like, I just thought of that because while I was doing the um the tours as the nigga from Power at the club, you know when you be getting booked in cities, they don't want you. They kind of frown upon being double booked. Like, let's say I come in, like if I come into like let's say I'm in Dallas, mm-hmm. 
and then I'm hosting a party at a club in Dallas on a Sunday, but I come into Dallas on a Friday. Um, they don't want you to go to okay. another club. They might take the business from the next day. Yeah, they like don't. That. They be like, yeah, nah, bro, you can't, you can't get booked at the club that on the other side of town on Friday and then come to ours on Sunday, they're going to want their money back type thing. Okay. They they don't like to, that's what they be like. Don't, don't double book yourself like that. So I'm like, all right, in order to circumvent that, I was like, what can I do that these niggas can't say nothing about? And while I was on that tour doing the club tour, I named it. I was like your boyfriend broke tour. That's what I, I called it. <laughs> I called it your boyfriend broke tour. So then I'm like, nigga, staying on theme with that i was like what else can i do and i was like man your boyfriend can't cook i was like bro i'm gonna get restaurants to book me the same way a club does pay me the same amount to go in a restaurant and just cook because like how many niggas on real tv is doing shit like that nobody i'm like nobody doing that because i was thinking about like i used to see like them little videos of like celebrities being behind the register, like Raising Cane's, you used to see shit like that with Drewski and all yeah. that. They would go work a shift at, at like Raising Cane's, and I was like, I was like, nah, nigga. But what if I did this at like a real raw ass steakhouse, though, nigga? I was like, oh yeah, I like at some like elevate that shit and not just like working there. Like, no, nah, nigga, I'm in the back really cook. cooking that shit. I'm cooking that shit, nigga. My seasoning's my way. Like, have I'm, you ever been worked in a restaurant? Yeah, but not as a cook. Okay. I've been a server. I've been a bartender. I've been head of security. Okay. But I ain't never been a chef in a restaurant. I just be cooking at the crib. And right, I saw. I saw when you would do. So when you was back in L.A. and season two aired, I saw you were do, hosting a watch party every week, and you was yeah. your friends, your friends in the area. Yeah, uh, yeah. Cooking for them as well. Yeah, exactly. That's kind of how. That's what made it take off. I started using those watch parties to like promote the your boyfriend can't cook shit. So like every time I would have people over. And then that shit just started to get out of control to the point where it's like, nigga, I need a venue. I can't keep having y'all niggas in my house like this. It's like 60, 80 niggas in my house. I got a one bedroom. Y'all got to get the fuck out. It's like, it just got, it became to get too big. But what that's what I would do. Like, I would have people over, we watching the show and they eating and they'd be like, oh my God, Chris, where you get this from? Where you order this from? This shit bomb, nigga. Where you get this from? LA, you know, LA ain't got no good food. I'm finna order this. And I was like, I didn't oh, order shit. that shit. I was like, I cooked that shit. Were you offended when people said no? That? Hell no, because it ain't they like they saw me. Food. They, they didn't. Good food. Yeah, not in L.A. Like you know what I'm saying? It's hard to get food, food like that. Yeah. Good food in L.A. People don't cook out there. Yeah, yeah. people don't really yeah. cook every day. Yeah, so when they would taste it, they'd be like, "Where you order this from?" And I'm like, "No, I, I cooked that." And then they was like, "Wait, what?" And then everybody would just start tagging it. And then that's how it started. And then I was like, "Yeah," and I just kept building on it, building on it, building on it. And now I'm probably like. I'm about to do the one in Chicago here. Wait, where are we doing it? Are you, are you announcing it yet? No, 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 no. You haven't announced it yet? No, the date is the 28th. Though. So we're, we're, look out for uh, April 28th. April Sunday, 28th. April 28th. Sunday, April 28th. Lock that in. Clear your day. We're locking that in. We haven't announced the date of the location yet. Yeah, no. Okay. I'm not looking yeah, not yeah, sure. Yeah, I seen you, uh, you, you cooked in uh, Arizona, Sugar Jam. Oh, you know, she's I used to, I stayed in uh, Scottsdale probably. Oh, like word. Years, yeah. yeah, she dope. It's yeah, black yeah. on the lady yeah. who on that. I think she's in New York or something yeah. like that. Yeah, they super dope, bro. They yeah. super dope. I don't know what I'm going to actually cook like yet. It. I don't know what I'm going to actually cook yet. Probably, um, I don't know. Probably, like, something that I could do where it's, like, you could taste the, my food and know that I can cook, but something that I could also do kind of quick and something that I could also make a lot of it. You know what I'm saying? So I'm going to probably do like a... I know your go-to is wings. Definitely. Well, people be mad if I don't make wings. So, like, I have to do that. Um, I'll probably make, like, a jerk jerk pasta, like, rasta pasta type situation. I'll probably do that. And I'll probably go salmon. I might not go lamb chops. I might not go lamb chops. Just to... Yeah. yeah no, nah, yeah. Well, shit, nigga. I'm going to Restaurant Depot on niggas anyway. So it doesn't even matter. I'm cool. We're... So let's, let's talk about Chicago food. What is like if, if your your homies come in town? Hey, take me take me to like the Chicago staples. Name the Chicago staples. Like on some hood shit or like real, real food. Both. Well, see, people might get mad at me because there's a lot of shit that I just don't eat. I know it's a yeah. staple, but I don't eat no goddamn hoagie. Like I don't eat that. Ooh, like hoagie. like oh, a lot of people do. They got home. Yeah, home oh, of the hoagies. Hoagie. Like. Like, yeah. see, like, so it's a lot of shit I may or may not name, okay. but it's not because I'm not cognizant and aware of it. Just I just like don't eat that sandwiches. shit. Yeah. yeah, like, I ain't no cold cut eating nigga. Like, yeah. I ain't, you know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> <laughs> you know, so it's like, for me, I'm going to do the Herald shit. Okay. I'm going to do, I'm still going to do I'm the JJ's try. and like Sharks. Hard. I'm going to take them all of them. Okay, Because okay, okay. it's like, they yeah. different, but they, they the same. Them, they yeah, yeah, so like, I'm going to do that. I'm going to do the Giordano's. I'm, I'm going oh, Giordano's over. Mount 
Of course, it's better than Illuminati's. To me, that's pizza, right? Yeah, to yeah. me, Giordano's is way better than Illuminati's. Portillo's. Definitely a Portillo situation. Sure. Definitely, uh, I might even go I fifty seven just because I'm a real tip of hotly eating mm-hmm. ass nigga. I might go I fifty seven. Um, I'm gonna go Gibson's. Okay. I'm gonna probably go. I'm gonna probably go Maple and Ash too for, sure, for the for brunch sure. though. I don't care about their real food. Okay. It's only the brunch on the weekend. I'm gonna yeah. I'm gonna make that a Sunday thing so they can experience that brunch. Mm-hmm. Y'all bogus as hell for taking the Cinnabons away, though. I'm gonna get. We gonna talk about that another time. Um, yeah, uh, yeah. We said Portillos. What else? High fifty seven. Nah. I was. I think still over. That's what I'm saying. That was when I lived. When I was in high school, I remember I used to take the de- uh, one, the dean's car and 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 go out out west to MacArthur's to go get lunch for the dean and the principal and all that shit and then they would buy me some too like I was like the little niggas at school hated me yeah, I would be in the yeah like I'd be in the <laughs> dean's office like kids would walk in the office looking for the dean and I'm sitting at her desk like this and I'd be like oh Miss Palm somebody in here for you and then they used to take your hats like you walking in, in school with hats they would take hats I'll be in there like looking through the bag of hats that she took for the day, and I'll be like, "Oh shit, I'm taking this one, I'm putting, that, <laughs> putting that one in my bag." Like, nigga, I'm going through that. Like, bro, I had a good in high school. I had a good. Okay, I had a pretty okay. good. Um, what are your favorite places to go to eat besides like the Chicago Staples? Like, what do you consider here? Like, you if somebody come in town, like me, if I'm coming in town, he come in town, he's a pescatarian. Uh, where are you gonna send him? Oh, I don't know. You know, oh, would you eat fish? Yeah, uh, yeah, fish. I'll probably take him to like Hugo's Frog Bar or okay. Fish House. I'll probably take him to like Hugo's. So I'm mad because I'm not gonna name the place. He ordered jerk the other day, and I'm so mad he ordered it from. Where are you get it? Uh, well, I don't even want to say it. Oh, it wasn't good. He had a catfish. I had catfish, catfish, uh, oh, jerk you know, catfish. Oh, but I'm yeah, used to. Yeah, I'm yeah, used yeah. to. So in the south, you. It's like fried catfish. You eat catfish and shrimp. Yeah, shrimp that's and great stuff. Bait. Like the, it was bait. It oh, was food. a little different. Yeah, it yeah was, that's, that's no, I'm mad because if he would have said I want some jerk, I would have told him get flaves. Oh yes, you should have yeah. went to flaves. Shout out to Phil. I was just at yeah. flaves. That's a staple for real too. Yeah. I probably would have took you to kitchen cocktails though. Only you could have got your fried catfish you, if they would have fried it. I'm oh, talking yeah. about. Yeah. Awesome. You still got time. When you leave? Uh, probably like two, three days. Oh, nigga. Maybe hit or miss though. Not to they be hit. Chris, it's you. Right. Compared to the regular people, look, it's hit or miss. I agree with that. They ain't going to treat me the same. No. Nah. It's a hit every time. Because <laughs> it's you. Maybe so, but hey, I don't know. And you want to know also what it is? Because I'm not, I'm a bar nigga. Like, I don't like, I hate sitting at tables anywhere I go. I don't like it. Tables, you get the worst service in the world. And that's why I think the food be trash. It don't necessarily be because it's trash. It be because that shit probably been sitting at Expo for eight minutes, ten minutes, waiting on the people to come get it and run it to you. And that's also why I hate large dinner groups because your food because they they waiting for everybody shit at the table to get goddamn ready. But nigga, I ordered something simple and my pasta been sitting there for eight minutes, but I'm waiting on your goddamn steak to come out because they want to bring it all to the table together. I hate that shit. That's why I, I sit at the bar. Like you get best service in the world at the bar. Uh, I learned something new today. I'm Bush, telling you, man. Gino Marty's. I love Gino and Marty's, but I feel like now that they start like doing a little kicking it situation yeah, yeah. upstairs, I I rarely go there for food anymore. Uh, there's only I love Gino and Marty's, love the atmosphere, ambiance. There's only certain things I order from there. Lamb chops. The steak, the lamb chops, the gnocchi. I don't, I don't even know what the fuck gnocchi is. I don't need it. Potato pasta. Yuck. Yeah. And then Adelina. I, I love Adelina, but I don't go there for the food either. I only I eat the meatballs only, and I, that's really all I eat at Adelina. Whole menu is a vibe. I, I love Adelina. I, I, just, I just go for the vibe, and I go for the drinks because they drink they old fashions cheap yeah. as hell. It's only like sixteen dollar old fashions, I'm, and I drink old fashions, and it's rare to find a sixteen dollar old fashion. RPM is a staple. I ain't been to RPM in so long. That's why I used to work. I used to oh, work. Really? Yeah, I worked at RPM that's State. Eight? Yeah, I worked at RPM Steak. That's the job I quit before I moved and went to L.A. Okay. I was working there. I was the head uh, hospitality, basically security. But <laughs> but they call it a hospitality manager. That's what they called it, nigga. I had a suit on, walking around with a fucking earpiece. That was it. That was one of my fucking security. Though. For real. I ain't lying, nigga. So I had an earpiece with a suit. But for real. Oh I look like an well. agent, nigga. All right, we want to take it back real quick. So far, what has been your favorite role? Uh, ballers. Ballers. Yeah, for sure. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Cause on TV, that shit was. He can relate more because you was an athlete too. Yeah, yeah. 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 that and I got to like I was gonna fake ask. live out the the dream of going to the going NFL, to even yeah. though it was fake. It just it felt it real, real and it seemed real, and I'm like, nah, nigga, this would have been lit. Like, right. nigga, like, and then ballers was just like, bro, it was a. How was that working with the party rock? every like, day? Yeah, it was that was that, that, that rock was like, dope. You, well, like you went from this to like working with the, one of the you know best, best ultimate yeah. entertainers, not just actor entertainers yeah. of our era. No, the rock was dope. I was one of the people like before I got that job. I was like, nah, this nigga can't be as nice and as dope as everybody make this nigga seem. Everybody just they just kissing his ass. He's not that nice, right? I'm like, nigga, I'm gonna get around him and I'm gonna find it. I'm gonna find out what's wrong with this nigga because I'm not kissing your ass, Dwayne. I'm gonna Too find what's to be wrong true. with you. Right, right. I was ready. I was gonna find it. You said you tried it. I tried, bro, and I was around that nigga for three years. And you can say nothing bad about. I was like, you son of a bitch. You're like, you really are. You really are like that, like, and that was dope. But that's, crazy. that's why Kevin Hart be coming at him so hard. Yeah, bro. Like, no, nah, he's a really good fucking guy. He's a great human being, nigga. Like, I can't. That's what you can say about a nigga like Dwayne, bro. He's a great human being. Like, so yeah, Ballers was my favorite, bro. It was one big party every day. Like, every day you come on set, you just never knew what was gonna happen. It's like, all right, Chris, today you are on a yacht and you're having a party, and there's girls everywhere, there's bikinis, and it's a pool party or it's a house party. And it's like, oh yeah, we got special guests here today. YG and, and Quavo are here, and and this was this like nigga, this is just, this the dream. This yeah. is crazy. Like this was work every day. That's oh right. yeah, here's your Rolls Royce for today. You're riding around in that. Yeah. This da da da. You ain't about to do it. like I'm like. Yeah, hey. I shot that in Miami. See, I wasn't lucky enough. Well, I ain't gonna say lucky enough. God protected me. <laughs> I wasn't on the show when they filmed in Miami. I was on the show when they moved okay. into L.A. Oh, okay. And that was the best thing that could have happened for me. Because if I Miami would have turned you out. If I was on Ballers, living in Miami, filming that show, oh, my God. I'd probably have a little Chris running around by now. <laughs> how was it? Because uh, Denzel Washington, uh, son, ain't it? Yeah, John yeah. David. Yeah, how, yeah how John David. With him? He was super dope, too. Like he, And I love him. I respect him so much. That's one of my like good friends. I respect him so much because he don't he don't play on that. He don't play on that he's fact. He's very talented too. I've seen a couple of his, of his roles, and he's played different. He's he's not typecasted. That's a dope. That's a dope thing about him. He's not typecasted. And he really is talented as well. Yeah, he he's just a dope person too. And like I said, he don't he don't play on the fact that he's Denzel. So right, yeah, that's why he, he actually like wants you to never talk about that shit. He don't even when he got this job when he got ballers. He never told them that. He was Denzel's son. Nobody knew because I that, know, was his I first know, that was his first role. I ain't no late. Yeah, that was his like his first yeah, role. Yeah, so nobody knew him as being Denzel's son in the industry like that. They were just so he really just booked his role off his own merit, and I respect that because like you know me like it's always you know people want what they don't have. So like when you on the outside looking in, it's like nigga, I would use that nepotism. Like right. but he he got it and don't, don't use it. Either. Like so to me that's like that's, that's commendable. Respect. Yeah, I, I respect the fuck respect. out of you. Because don't let Denzel be my daddy, nigga. I right. swear to God. Same here. Yeah. What? Right. Nigga, I'll be screaming that shit from the mountaintops. Excuse me, ma'am. Out of my way. Denzel's my father. Who I am? Right. Do you, do you know who I am? That's why God ain't giving it to me. Like, he, I hope my kids act like that. Nigga, do you, my dad will have your ass. I want right. kids like that. <laughs> <laughs> I want kids like that, little bastards, little rich bitches. That's I what I want. That's how my kids is now. Nah. I want that. <laughs> I want a little rich bastard kids. Like you like you little motherfuckers. I don't want people to look at my kids. You little motherfucker. You lucky your daddy. Yeah, you lucky, lucky your daddy. Ooh, if you wasn't Chris Lofton's son, I would slap the shit out of you. Yes. That's life complete right there. Did you have anybody that inspired you once you started acting? Um, yeah, my friends for real. Like it wasn't like, or any references or anything that kind of, you know, motivated you to like, oh, I wanna be like that. Um, no, nah, I ain't never really want to be like nobody for real, other than like niggas wanted to be Will Smith, right. niggas right. wanted to be like Jamie Foxx, right. niggas wanted to be Denzel. Like, I just feel like those were like the standards. And like me, I wanted to act more like Leo, though. Like, I love Leonardo DiCaprio. Like, that yeah. nigga's so great at fucking raw. Like, he's just raw. Like, so for that, but I kind of, I kind of stick more to people that I, that I can touch. You know what I'm saying? So, like, I, I look to my left and to my right. To get my motivation, that's why niggas like LaRoyce. Mm -hmm. Like he was dope. Like just more so the way he like handles his business, the way he handles his business, and the way he moved through the industry. Because he been doing this shit for a minute. We've been I, doing I it for a long time, but he Chicago PD been running for twelve years now. So. so I was telling him when we were out the other night, and I'm like, you know, the first time I ever experienced you 
was when you did a show at Refuge. The so Air Wait, Refuge, Social Era used to be called Refuge. Yeah, Refuge Live. Refuge Live, yeah. So I, I told him, I said, the first time I ever experienced one of your, you know, like, your acting, your, your comedy, mm -hmm. um, was that Refuge one. And he was like, you was there? I was like, yeah, I was there, you know. And then and then kind of led to, like, just medium throughout the city in Chicago, you know, same people, yeah. you know, small world type of thing. Um, so, yeah, I, I understand where you're coming from, where, like, he started from this journey, and now he's here, and he's still uh, on a reoccurring person. You know, like, for you, you woke up one, you read the script one day, he's on gone. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? He hasn't had that yet. Right. Yeah, but now, see, he's a series regular. Right. He ain't reoccurring. Right. Yeah, he is, that nigga's a regular, like, you know what I'm saying? And that's why this is dope for me on Power to be a regular. He's dope. But yeah, he ain't opened that script yet, and Atwater is not dead. Right. And that's 12 <laughs> years ago, and that's, that shit is not easy to do. Shout out to Dick Wolf. What, um, what role would you love to fulfill as, in terms of, like, uh... I want to be a serial killer. You want to be a serial killer? So bad. Okay. That's crazy. I can't fucking wait. I'm going to probably write it myself. I wasn't prepped for that, like... I don't think I need no prep, bro. I'm going to be real with you. <laughs> it's already there. It's there. It's inside of me. <laughs> it's the whole thing. Nah, but for real, I would, uh, I would just watch a lot of that, a lot of different shit, man. But American Psycho is one of my favorite fucking movies. I just movies, talked man. about that the other day. I love yeah, that so fucking well, movie, man. You've seen it? I'm still traumatized yeah. about shit. the whole head thing on the corner, on the sidewalk. Like, that was the one thing that I think, like, oh, I couldn't, I can't. Yeah, okay. like that 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 movie and like uh, Mr. Brooks. You ever seen Mr. Brooks? Nah, Devin Carson, you ain't seen that? You gotta watch that shit, bro. He was a serial killer, but he had like he was like a schizophrenic. Like he mm -hmm. saw like an he saw an imaginary person that didn't exist, mm -hmm. and it was like his guide and coach through his killing. Mm -hmm. But he was like this successful ass, super rich white dude with a regular job, like good job, family, the perfect life. Dang. But he just go outside at night and murder people. murder people. And then come back home and go to bed like nothing happened. Like I he, think that's how they be in real life. Though. Yeah, he just come, just come back home like nothing happened, bro. He just was outside, killed three people, came back home, kissed his wife good morning and shit, making coffee. Like Mr. Brooks, bro. Like that shit is hard. When I saw that movie and American Psycho, I was like, yeah, this is this what a real acting that because see to me, I just be feeling like the roles that I call them complex characters. But the darker the character, the more you got to act. Like, you know what I'm saying? Cause it's, so yeah. yeah, like, it, you don't have to be a good actor to be the nice guy. You right. don't have to You don't have to be a good actor to just fucking smile and wave and just laugh yeah, or something. Yeah. You just got to have what, a nice smile, some good teeth, nigga. That's it. That's really it. You don't have to be a good actor for that, though. But you got to be a good actor to convince people your ass is a serial killer. Serial killer. To convince people that you're crazy. To convince people that I'm high on fucking heroin. Right. I ain't so gotta be like, a good actor to act excited though. Like nigga, right. more challenging roles. Yeah. I like that Versus, shit. Yeah. yeah, and usually those roles tend to be darker though. Right. And that's why people would be like, "Oh, you're always the bad guy." I don't look at it like that. Right. I'm always the nigga that they ask to act. Yeah. Right. The rest of these niggas is just here being themselves. Mm -hmm. I'm acting. I want to act. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, because I ain't like that in real life. I ain't out here killing motherfuckers, but I want like let's do it. Let's move outside. Yeah, I'm chill, nigga. Yeah, uh, versus your character, Jannard, and then talking to you is like two different people. Right. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm chilling, bro. Are there any opportunities you want to tap to in the in that industry? Directing, writing, producing? All of it. I do I do all of that already. Okay. I already wrote a script. I'm writing more. I got uh, writing partners. My brother helped write for my production company. I got a production company, 630 Entertainment. And I definitely want to direct and shit, too. I, I directed Patrick. He showed me. Oh, you showed his music video? video. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I directed that just to start. And um, and I'll be shadowing the directors on Set of Power just so I can. And like I said, I've been acting so long that the acting shit, damn near easy. And it, I don't even, like, really have to try, which is kind of fucked up. But um, I just want something more challenging. Like, I'm the type, like, even yesterday, not yesterday, but the day before, like, I don't practice my script for real while I'm at home. Like I'll be outside. You check out, you check out yeah. Like you'll see me outside or something at the bar or something and it'd be like twelve thirty, one o'clock and, and she like, Chris, you gotta work tomorrow? I'm like, yeah. What time did you call time? Chilly. It'll be like seven AM or something. I gotta be at work at seven and it's be like twelve and I'll still be there. Because I like that shit to feel real. Like right. so to me, I'm the type of person I'm I'm too much of a not I ain't gonna say perfectionist, but if you give me too much time with some shit, I'm going to have that shit playing to a T. Mm -hmm. So if I'm at home for three, four days practicing these lines, it's going to feel too robotic when I film it. Because right. to me, in my head, 
for the past three, four days, I've been thinking, all right, when I say this line, I know this is the line I want to grab my drink and I'm going to take a sip on this one and then I'm going to put it down. And then when I say that word, that's when I'm going to stand up. And then this one, this one, I'm going to touch the phone. Like, I'm going to already have that shit pre-planned. Calculated. And it's going to be too, I'm going to look like this, but if I wait and just wait it out, bro. And it's like, all right, cool. You ain't got to say this shit. You got seven hours, so you got to say this. Now go look at it. Or even more, I don't do that shit till I get to work in my trailer, in the hair and makeup trailer. Because I got an hour for them to put on that stupid ass ear. They're going to put on that ear for an hour. And while they're doing that, that's when I'm sitting there reading that shit. And I'll be like, oh, okay. Okay. All right, bet. So now when they say action, that shit really sounds and feels like it's the first time I'm ever saying it because it is. Right. So it feel way more natural. So I ain't practiced it a thousand times because, nigga, you can't practice no shit like this. Like, let's say the line is, Oh man, fuck this shit. If, if I'm at home, yeah. I might exactly. practice it and be like, oh man, fuck this shit. But if right. I didn't practice it at all and I just was in the moment, I might go like this. Oh man, fuck this shit. Right. But who would practice to do their arms like this? Nobody, Nobody going to be out home and be like, oh, I'm going to go like this when I say that. <laughs> it just going to happen. It's natural. It's just natural. So to me, that's why I don't over prepare that shit. I just wait and not be there. And then you might practice that shit and think that the scene going to be set up like this. And you think that we're going to be sitting on this couch together. You practice it in your head like that. Mm. So you, all your interactions is like real close. But then when you get on set and the director there, that nigga might tell you to go sit on top Change of this thing. thing. Like, no, you sitting over there. She's over there. So now, nigga, everything you practice don't even make fucking sense anyway. So I just wait. How's your uh, relationship with 50? You know, a lot of people see, is he really, really that like troll, troll guy? For real, for real? Yes. He really is that troll guy, and he really is the nigga controlling his Instagram, too. It ain't nobody else posting for him. That's him. That is him. Uh, that is, other people can log in and throw some up there. If Sometimes the only shit that might not be him is when they do, like, the promo shit, when somebody yeah. uploads his videos, and it's like the real, the real post right. might not be him. But all of that shit, when he talking shit and this and that, that is that nigga sitting there on his phone like this. He's so dope, though, bro. Like, he... You learn a lot from Fifth. That's that's the homie. I learned a lot from him. You just got to sit there and listen to him because he will talk. He will talk. Fifty will talk your ear off if you let him. So we had a, we have a question from our friend Jackie Long. Uh, what Jackie talking about? <laughs> why you still use Beijing? On the show? He just said, he said, why you still use Beijing? <laughs> He's funny as fuck. I don't use no goddamn Beijing. They was putting that shit on me in season one, but I made them stop. <laughs> they don't do it no more. Season two or three, they don't do that shit Let's no hang more. Out here. I do got here. Fuck you. Um, <laughs> but um, nah. What it was is, I feel like I feel like white people always feel like this. Is like, especially in this industry, they be like, we want contrast between the two of you. Like, trust me, we don't look that much alike, nigga. You and, I, you and, you and Isaac do not look that much alike. It's like they're, they're, whole they're gonna be able to tell us apart. I promise. We both. So that's why. That's why they put the ear on me. And they try to be like, all right, let's make his hair a little darker so we can have the distinguished differential between the two. He's balder, and we don't want both of you. To, yeah, we don't want both of you to have low hair or no hair. That's we, that. That's that all black man look like. That's yeah. really what it is. So that's why they. I was the victim because right. literally it was either or. It was like either Isaac was gonna have the ear or I was. And either Isaac was going to have to do the hair shit or I was. Right. But because Isaac was already bald and I just cut my hair really, really low, right. they was like, oh, well, it's you. We're going to put this shit on you. I'm like, goddamn. Like, so I got the ear and the shit. I was the fucking guinea pig. So did you have to prep? Because you were a boxer. Did you have to prep for that? Yeah, they made us go to um, Isaac went to boxing uh, school season one. We didn't have to do it for season two. But season one for like three months, he had to go to boxing class and I had to take UFC training. Damn. For like three, three, four months. But you don't even work out. I don't. I, I thought it was hilarious. Patrick got you again. Yeah, probably won't happen again. <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, it was funny because she said you don't work out. And we was watching uh, one of your other podcasts, the podcast that you was on. He was like, you worked at a gym at uh, LA Fitness. She was like, oh, yeah. Uh, 24 hours. 24 hours. Yeah. And I started cracking up. I said, this, this man don't even work out. Oh, yeah. No, and everybody at that job thought I was crazy because there was like, I'm like, so y'all niggas gonna get off work at the gym and then go in there and work, work out, out and not leave? I'm going the fuck home, nigga. I'm like, this is a job. I'm going home. I'm not going in there to work out after I was just at work all day. I don't, I, 
So they used to look at me crazy, like, how do you work here and you can work out for free and you still don't work out? Only thing I would do, I would go to the basketball court and shoot. Right. That's it. But I'm not in there. Once I stopped playing sports, I stopped giving a fuck. Like, I swear, like, the, the only reason I used to work out is because I play football. I I'm play right. baseball. I'm a picture of your body when you was, was working out. I mean, I was a kid. Oh, so it was never an adult where you was fit. No. Uh, I mean, just I say no. Know, I, don't, I don't know. I was a kid when I was doing that shit, like because I didn't go to college, right? So I ain't been like working out on a consistent basis since I was probably like like seventeen, eighteen. So even for ballers, you did it? No, that's oh, wow. crazy. That's crazy. Yeah, I just, I mean, I just look like that. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm a country Mississippi nigga, yeah, then yeah, like already there. And I think that's another reason I'm a very incentive based person. I need incentive to do that shit. And for me, the incentive was sports. That's right. why I'm working out. Because I'm not a fan of that shit. I'm doing it, nigga. I play sports. I'm doing it. And, like, if I book a role and they like, nigga, we want you to be like this, that's my incentive. I'll do it. But for me, I'm not fat. I look like a nigga who does work out and I don't. I look better than some niggas who go to the gym every day. Every day. And I look better than you. Like, nigga, I got, I'm swollen than you. I got muscles. Like, nigga. Yeah. Where's my incentive? If niggas was walking around telling me, bro, you, you look kind of big, Chris, you look fat as hell, maybe that would be my incentive to go. Right. But because people ain't doing that, I have no incentive. Okay. And I'm just like, fuck it. You motherfucking damn have to pay me. <laughs> <laughs> for that shit, for real. We're going to switch it up. We're going to do this or that movie edition. All right. Ferris Bueller's Day Off or Home Alone? Home Alone. Breakfast Club or Cooley High? Neither. <laughs> okay. I don't even know what Breakfast Club is. That's the white oh, version. Yeah, yeah, the white version. Uh, belly or Payton Fool? That's tough. Not really Payton Fool. Payton Fool or Juice? And we talked about it last night. If they make a Payton Fool too, we can see you in camera. Yeah, sure. I want to play sure. Cam in the Gipset sure. biopic. Sure. Yeah, sure. that'll be yeah. hard. I want to play Cam for sure. I've been trying to do that for years. I'm talking to Cam about it. we be playing though, but <laughs> it's all good, Cam. Harlem Nights are coming to America. Oh, that's tough. Oh man, that's tough. Coming to America, fuck it. Yeah, coming to America. Um, uh, paid in four Bronx Tale. Paid in four. Menace to Society or Boys in the Hood? Menace to Society. Friday or Rush Hour? Oh, that's the hard one, huh? The Rush Hour one? Yeah. Rush Hour. House Party or Don't Be a Menace? House Party 1? Yes, of course. Uh, nah, 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 nah. Nah. House Party 2. Because <laughs> <laughs> these are valid questions, though, because the answer might change. Uh, so, House Party or what? Don't be a menace. Oh, oh my God. No, nah, I'm going to still go. Uh, fuck. Yeah, I'm going to go House Party. I'm going to go House Party. Love and basketball or poetic justice? Poetic justice. Baps or set it off? Set it off. All right. Give me your Chicago Mount Rushmore. Of who? Well, Just people who don't matter what they do? Yeah, it can yeah. be. Uh, Obama, for sure, is for on that. For sure. You got Obama, Obama from there? For Hell sure. Yeah. Damn, I didn't even know that. Hell yeah, yeah Obama. You, you got to put Obama on that motherfucker. Sure. You got to throw Kanye on that motherfucker. Uh, Mike, Mike not from here, though. We're going to throw Derrick Rose on that motherfucker. Oh, yeah, Derrick. I'm going to throw Chief Keith on that motherfucker, too. Uh -uh. I ain't even think about Chief Keith. Chief Keith really did, really made no, 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 what no, it is. Right? Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm throwing not Chief. Not that. I'm just like, that's a, that's a different person that's, compared to what oh, yeah. the other ones are. Yeah, I'm throwing Chief Keith on that motherfucker. I would say Oprah, but she ain't from here either. Oprah's but, not from here. She but she got here. her yeah. shit. She here, developed. She, she built herself here. Yeah. Um, uh, I'll give you an honorable mention. <clears throat> who? No, I'm saying you, you, know, um, you can add one. Um, add an a six man. A six man. Uh, nigga, I'm gonna damn near put Vince Vaughn on there. Oh yeah. Vince Vaughn from here. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, I'm gonna damn near throw Vince Vaughn on there. That nigga's wildly successful. Right. Hey, uh, matter of fact, no, he's from uh Canada. I was gonna say Ryan Reynolds from here too. Okay. No, no, he's from Canada, but Vince Vaughn is. Okay. Um, any, any six man you want to throw on there? What I say? You said Kanye, Obama, Obama, Obama Kanye, um, Chief, Chief Keith, Keith. Um, Vince Vaughn, and who missed one? I don't know, man. I'm trying to think. It's too many. It's too many. Uh, 
I don't throw Isaiah Thomas on there. Okay. The basketball player. Okay. Uh, yeah, because he's from here. The I mean, I feel Detroit. Like, played with Detroit. Yeah, oh, yeah he's from, like, yeah, he from here. I feel like he could throw Chance on that too. Yeah, I was going to say Chance, but I was trying to – I felt like there was somebody who's just like a lot older who's who's been doing it a lot longer that I should look for first. I, but as a six man, I would put Chance. Oh, yes, for sure. Six-man. Chance for sure. Chance, that's literally who I was going to say. And then I said Isaiah Thomas. One last question before we head out. Um, if you could go back and give Lil Chris any word of advice, what would it be? Right now, from right now. Mm. I would say start taking this shit serious earlier. I wouldn't have waited till like 27, 28 to take this shit serious because I probably could have been where I'm at now. Earlier. At 27 or 24 I could have been doing I could have been living like this at 25 if I was like stop being stupid you know I was still doing dumb shit like no take this serious lock in stop you know and that's what, I was so all over the place like no nigga do that do that and stop outside noise know that everybody can't come with you and cut niggas off get, nigga, get away from niggas get away from niggas I would have told myself that at 24 get away from niggas take this serious and then one thing you can tell the audience and somebody that's trying to be in, be in a position that you're in, what what one thing you can tell young, old, you know, it don't matter the age group, just would, something that lead them with. I would say um, protect your mental because that's all you got. The rest of the shit, everything else fades away, goes away, or leaves you. But you know, your mental is all you got when it's just you. If this ain't right, don't nothing else matter. You can go, you can make a hundred million dollars. If this ain't right, you are gonna. Either squander it all or keep right. jump off a fucking bridge or something. This got to be right. So for me, that's what it is. Like everybody gets a turn. That's what I would tell them. Everybody gets their chance. Everybody gets their opportunity. Everybody gets a turn. It's just a matter of who can mentally withstand how long it may take until it's your turn. Right. And everybody can't handle that part. Like some niggas would have quit doing this shit eight years ago. Like right. I've been acting twenty five years, nigga. I'm just now on power. Some niggas would have quit 15 years ago. Right. But I'm the type of nigga I just didn't give a fuck. Like, it was whatever. All right, cool. I'm going to keep going. I'm going to keep doing it. Everybody can't handle that shit, though. And that's why I say your mental, I would just lock in on your mental and keep be as mentally tough and strong as you can. Mental health is a motherfucker. That's yeah. what I would tell them. Well, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank appreciate you. It. Appreciate I appreciate you. y'all. I love you. Love None you. but. Thank you, man. Thank you. And then we'll stay tuned for season three. We're staying tuned for good times and seeing you on April 28th for Your Boyfriend Can't Cook. That's right. Yeah. Yeah.